Shall we see what the postman brought me today? Okay, so here we have a 2006 or 2007. We've got a cracked glass. We'll have to see if that happened in shipping or if it just was shipped that way. Uh, I see some fingerprints all over the face, which always makes me a little nervous because that means somebody's been in there dinking around. Um, let's see if it works. Let's see how it powers up. And uh, nope, it is dead. Oh, wait, let's let's connect it up all the way. Okay, so we have the normal indicator lights that come on that aren't processor dependent, but we got no life out of it. Let's find out why. So it looks like this video is going to be 100% for sure a prior repair attempt, judging by the amount of smudges and smears on the face. Definitely has been in there. Let's see what we have to work with. Hmm, okay. Now I remember the email about this one. If we look above the regulator for the processor, there's just a, a burnt up hole. I'll have to see what all is missing. Um, now I remember the story. It was uh, somebody's friend tried to fix it. They were able to fix their cluster, so they thought they'd give it a go on this guy's, and this is how he got it back. And it's even the solder mask has been burned off. It looks like parts of the layers of the uh, of the fiberglass has actually been burned down too. So definitely some good damage here. And that's just that's not normal like soldering iron damage either. That's, that's some aggressive stuff there. Um. Okay. Hmm. Where to start? So this damaged area. Let's get a closer look here. The damaged area we're dealing with is what provides the 2.5 volts to the microprocessor. Let me get my meter in view here. Uh, maybe what happened is the guy that thought he could fix it, he was able to fix his own, but he may have had a 2003 or 2004 board that just has some fractured, oh, we got a, a light missing. Oh, another light missing there too. Uh, he may just had some fractured joints and he was able to fix his board by just reflowing the solder. But this is the 2005, 6, and 7 design in the power supply, which is quite a bit different with these boards. Uh, well, let's say with the 03 and 04, there's just an extra leg on the voltage regulator that provides the 5 volts for the microprocessor. But in this year, they changed the microprocessor and it runs on 2.5 volts, not 5. So what happens is this isn't used at all to supply power for the microprocessor. It actually takes... 12 volts into this chip, this makes five, and then the five volt comes into here, and this makes two and a half, and then the two and a half gets it to here. So, and right now we're looking at the two and a half voltage. I'm gonna take a wild guess that this cluster is missing two and a half volts. I'm gonna go right to the main inductor. We have 1.2. That's more than I was expecting. I was expecting nothing. Or waste, waste, worst case scenario could be five. This is an adjustable voltage regulator, and surprisingly, it's an off the shelf. It's not proprietary. It's just a, uh, I don't know, generic. I ain't got a data sheet here for it. Let's find it. All right, so as I was saying, this is a off the shelf LP2950 8 pin adjustable voltage regulator. And uh, there's a sample circuit of what it probably looks like here. Uh, it's adjustable. It has a input pin. I suppose that feedback. Um, I thought it used a voltage divider or something like that to set the to set the voltage. Either way, the board is set up to set this voltage regulator at 2.5 volts. So if you mess with these resistors. You're either going to go low or you're going to go high. And since its input is 5 volts, worst case scenario would be 5 volts. And we're sitting at 1.2. Um, so maybe there's just, just an issue with the, the resistor that sets its voltage. 
Oh, uh, let's do this. Let's uh, force two and a half volts. I'm just going to uh, get my secondary power supply uh, set to 2.5. It has a common ground with the main power supply, which is set to the 13.8, whatever, close enough. Uh, we're just going to put two and a half volts on the two and a half volt rail. Let's see what happens. Just gonna go right in the, ooh, right in the inductor here. Yeah, look at that. She's alive. Um, so all we got to do is get this guy to output 2.5 volts again. After looking it over for a bit, uh, it's not as bad as it looks. It's only missing 100k resistor. And um, like I said earlier, there, there is just a, a voltage divider, um, pin seven. So here, yeah, um, connect a resistor divider to adjust the output voltage. And that's what they're doing here on pin seven, which is the feedback. There's just a 100k uh, voltage divider. One one side goes to ground, other side goes to the output here. This is what they're using. So the uh, 100k for the output that's tied to the output to the feedback is still there. That is uh, this blue resistor right here. So we're just missing the other half of the divider which is usually here which is gone. So if I just tie it to pin 7 to ground, that should be all it's going to need to get that voltage regulator to work right again. So let's try that now. All right, so I put back the 100K resistor that was missing, which was tied to pin 7 to ground. Let's see if it's going to work. Uh, now what I did is I removed the inductor that's between the voltage regulator uh, and the microprocessor, just in case something is going to terribly go wrong. I won't force the wrong voltage through the microprocessor and rec vac. So if that's rec, then you got pretty much, you know, I'm just gonna scrap the whole board if that's the case. So I'm gonna check, uh, I'm on the output of the voltage regulator and I'm gonna power it up. We'll see if we have 2.5. Now we have 2.25. That is a little low. Oh no, maybe, oh, okay. Now we're at, it's settling maybe. Now we're at, 2.36. Um, you know, I think that's that's close enough that I feel comfortable putting the inductor back. At least we're a little little under rather than a little over. Well, they're now it's at 2.5. I don't know what's going on, but that's that's good enough that I'm going to put the inductor back to allow that power into the microprocessor. So let's do that now. Okay, inductor is back on. So this is the moment we will find out if it'll work or not. So hit the power button, hey, that's a good sound. And yeah, the display's back up. All right, that's good. Yay, it's fixed. Well, that part's done anyways. It does have a bunch of burned out bulbs. 
trans temp part of the RPM. We've got the missing one, so there's definitely no light for the mile per hour. Oh, man, half, there's more bulbs out there. There's one working bulb if you don't count the blinkers. And this is this cruise control over here. And this still has the original old stepper motors in it, so at this point I'm just going to do the rebuild on it. And I think we're going to be okay. Should we check the voltage? See if we're sitting at 2.5 or close enough anyways. And back at the inductor. I suppose you want to be able to see the, the meter. 2.5 right on it. All right, back in business. Now the original problem with this board and the reason why it was uh, worked on originally was because it had some uh, intermittent power issues. So I'm going to be taking a close look for fractured solder joints and uh, just got done scrubbing off the uh, uh, any of the silver migration corrosion that can sometimes cause gremlins. Uh, I have noticed there's a couple of rings around the main terminal pins, which I'll pull it up under the microscope, the, the main power and ground i believe yeah i believe that's the main ground there as a ring around it so i'm going to be reflowing that i'm also going to give it the uh, temperature test here shortly Well, I did find a couple fracture solder joints that could cause intermittent power issues. We're going to give this the freezer test just to make sure. Now, while we wait, we agitate the cat. My food. No, okay. Oh, you heard something. Back to eating. Kitty. Kitty, wake up. There's a cluster in the freezer. Isn't that exciting? You just sleep all day. Get up. Okay, we're back from the freezer. Let's do the cold test, make sure it still boots up okay. And it does. That's good. Uh, let's give it the, uh, the hot test. Fire up the hot air station here and just heat it up. Crank, I'm gonna crank the blower up all the way here. I'm gonna reboot it a few times in the meantime. Just to make sure. So when you see it 
rebooting the startup, that's just me killing the power, reapplying the power just to make sure it still boots up normally. If it passes the cold test and the hot test and the room temperature test and the, let's give it the flex test, just flexing the board to see. I know I know my blinker's flashing on and off, my check engine light, that's because the connector's worn, but I think the intermittent problem is no longer there. I'm going to reboot it again. Yep, yeah, looks normal. Well, I think it's safe to continue with the rebuild. So not only is this a little bit more rare because it has a trance temp and it's a 2006-7 version, but it's also a diesel. So this one's definitely economical to repair because it would be uh, expensive and uh, more difficult to find a replacement than it would be for say like a 1500 chassis vehicle. So it's a good sign we have uh, data communication, we have the working gauges uh, that run through the class 2 and the little park indicator lit up too as you saw that so that's a good sign that also means it's seen the serial data let's give the rpm a mile per hour a test everything looks good and it's working and i'll put everything this is back to zero again i'll let this thing zero out start points look good so yeah like as i was saying this one's definitely was worth uh repair versus trying to find a replacement because this is a bit of an odd cluster just because of the year and that's a diesel uh, and the only thing left to do is put the busted lens back on um, well this is another one that's been wrapped up it passes the cold test it passes the hot test it passed the flex test and it is not intermittent so this one's going back to its owner so thanks again for watching guys we'll see you next time